What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to visualize the Mandelbrot set in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be a straightforward and practical video. We're going to focus on the implementation and not too much on the mathematics and the theory behind the Mandelbrot set and the fractal. If you want to have an explanation or an exploration from me, let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, you can just look it up on Wikipedia or ask ChatGPT about it. We're going to focus here on the implementation and the visualization. And for this, we're going to need two external Python packages. So you can open up your terminal and you can use pip or pip3 to install matplotlib and numpy. Those are the two packages we're going to need in this video today. Once you have them installed, you can just import them as np and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Uh, now the idea is that we're going to define a function, the Mandelbrot function, and then we're going to use it to determine whether a complex number is part of the set or not. Then we're going to construct a set and then we're going to visualize the set. So we're going to start by defining a function Mandelbrot. It's going to take a complex number and a maximum number of iterations. Uh, it should not diverge if it's part of uh, the Mandelbrot set. And then we're going to say z equals zero. This is just the formula, the calculation. Uh, we go for a maximum of max iteration. So 4n in, um, in range max iteration. And what we want to do now is we want to say, okay, if the absolute value of z, so exceeds two, so basically if z is below negative two or above two, uh, we return the number of iterations it took to diverge to go out of the bounds. And otherwise, what we do is we say z equals z squared plus the complex number. So that's the iteration. And we just assume that after a certain number of iteration, uh, iterations, if it didn't, um, if it didn't uh, diverge, then we're going to say it's basically part of the set. So we're going to return the max iterations. All right. Then we're going to define a function Mandelbrot set. And this function Mandelbrot set takes x min, x max, y min, y max, width and height, and also max iterations. And here basically we're going to construct, uh, construct a full set. So we're going to say x equals np lint space. So just creating the coordinates basically from x min to x max with the following width. And then we're going to copy that and do the same thing for y. So y minimum, y maximum and width. And then what we're going to do is we're going to recursively call that function. Uh, or actually, no, we're not going to recursively call this function. I just noticed right now that in my code, I uh, basically named the function the same way as my local variable. So let's call this different. Let's call this m set for Mandelbrot set. Uh, we're going to initialize this as a numpy array full of zeros with the following shape, height and width. And then we're going to say for i in range. Now we're going to construct complex numbers for i in range height, for j in range width. We're going to say that we want to have a complex number. This is a Python data type that is supported uh, by default. And it's going to be x, j, y, i. And now what we want to do is we want to say m set i j is equal to Mandelbrot. And we want to pass the complex number and the max iterations that are passed to this function. And then basically we want to return the Mandelbrot set. All right. So that is that the only thing that we need to do now is we need to specify uh, the parameters and then we can basically display the image. So we can say x min x max y min y max is equal to negative two, uh, one, negative 1.5 and 1.5. And then we're going to say that the width and the height are equal to 1000 and 1000. And we're going to allow for a maximum of 100 iterations until we say it's part of the set. And then we're going to construct the Mandelbrot image. And of course, this is going to only have a certain resolution. So we cannot, uh, because if you know the fractal, you can maybe look up some tool online that allows you to zoom into it interactively. Um, oh, by the way, sorry, this is 
we need to return m set, not the function. Um, when you look uh, up the uh, the fractal online, you will see that you can endlessly zoom in. Of course, we don't have that granularity because we're just going to picture it uh, on a high level. So in a in a um, just just as an overview, we're not going to go deep and uh, deeper and deeper into it. Um, and because of that, we have a limited uh, scope here. So we're going to call the function Mandelbrot set, and we're going to pass to it x min, x max, y min y max with height and the max iteration. So basically these parameters here and now all we have to do is we have to display them. So plt im show, we want to display the image, the Mandelbrot image uh, and the extent here is just x min, x max, y min, y max and we're going to use the hot color map. Um, then we can say plt color bar just so we see what the color stands for. And then we're going to say plt title, just some basic stuff like Mandel brought visualization. And then uh, we can label the axes of the complex number. So x label is going to be a real number or the real part and the Y label is going to be the imaginary part. And then we're going to just show this. And when I run this now, you will hopefully see if I didn't make any mistakes. There you go. The fractal visualized the Mandelbrot set. Now, of course, you could go and try to calculate this deeper and deeper if you zoom into it so that it never ends. But that is computationally very intensive um, and expensive. So yeah, this is a simple way to just visualize the set. Of course, you can also use a different uh, color map. Basically, everything you have in here uh, is max iterations, which means it's part of the set and everything that you see that has color is not part of the set and terminates after uh, or diverges after uh, very few iterations around here and takes longer on the coastline here, which is infinite, of course, even though uh, the area is finite. So yeah, this is how you visualize the Mandelbrot set in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.